very pleased to be here, and I'd like to start by commending the United Nations system, but in particular the Secretary General himself for the constant uh, focus and struggle uh, for the rights of the poor and for the eradication of poverty, best exemplified in the Millennium Development Goals. Um, I think it's important to realize that there has been significant progress made in the last 20 years. Uh, at least 660 million people have been lifted out of poverty, much of that as a result of an extraordinary and unrivaled period of economic growth around the world, in particular um, in large, uh, uh, large middle-income countries such as uh, China and India. That global growth is slowing down, as we and the International Monetary Fund uh, pointed to uh, last weekend at our annual meetings. But underneath that story of success is a story of um, yet so much still to do. Uh, 1.3 billion people still without access to electricity, 2.6 billion people with no access to sanitation, 900 million without la lacking uh, safe, clean drinking water. And as the FAO said last week, uh, around 800 million people still going to bed every night hungry. Uh, these are unacceptable statistics uh, for this modern day and age, but behind every one of those statistics is the life of an individual, uh, an opportunity that has gone uh, unfulfilled. At the World Bank Group, we firmly believe that when we struggle for and work towards sustainable development, that this should not be seen as a choice between poverty eradication on the one hand and environmental protection on the other. We will not achieve the eradication of poverty, let alone speed it up, without building a shared prosperity. And that shared prosperity will depend on nature and the services that it provides. We need to have a more inclusive and greener growth going forward. Environmental degradation actually holds back growth and drives up poverty. In a recent study we found in more than 20 countries, the average cost of environmental degradation was more than 8% of GDP. Protecting, maintaining, and investing in the natural resource base, therefore, is essential for sustained economic success. We've been investing in this area for a long time for good reason. Without clean air, clean land, clean food, clean water, healthy oceans, the basis of life and economic prosperity is and will be gone. Because our mission at the World Bank Group is to foster a world without poverty, we chose to become one of the largest financiers worldwide of biodiversity conservation. And we believe that nature is at, is at the very heart of the kind of growth we need going forward. We've invested more than seven billion in biodiversity conservation in the past 20 years, and we bring the experiences and lessons learned to this convention. Wealth going forward needs to be understood both as, uh, as income, as we measure today, but also as social capital and natural capital. And we will be pushing this message very hard here, just as we have been in other international fora in the last year. In order to be able to move forward, we also believe you need a different kind of partnership, one that also the UN believes in as well. And to achieve the Aichi targets, this becomes very important. We need to have communities, civil society, the private sector that has such an important role in driving forward the kind of growth we need, and the public sector working alone, with environment ministries playing a key leadership role in bringing attention to these matters. So it's very appropriate to be celebrating the International Day for the Eradication of Poverty in the middle of a conversation around biodiversity because the two things are codependent. And we hope that our insights, uh, our experiences in every region of the world together with our private sector and government clients will be something that can show a way forward. Thank you very much.